So if you just got yourself a brand new Nerd QX miner, let's go over how to get it set up and up and running to get you hashing away. Now, whether you got yourself a hydro-cooled version or an air-cooled version, or maybe you've got a Nerd QX Plus series or a Nerd QX Plus Plus, either way, the principles here in this video are gonna be the same. Now, a special thank you to Solo Satoshi for sending over these two miners. We've got the Nerd QX Plus Hydro, as well as the Nerd QX Plus Plus, as well as Bitcoin Merch for sending over the other Nerd QX Plus Plus. And I'll link to them for you down in the description below. And again, the setup process is gonna be basically the same here for all of the different versions. And we'll go ahead and do the setup here on this air-cooled Nerd QX Plus Plus. Now, to get things started, you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and power on your miner. And as it starts up, you're gonna see this initial splash screen here. Uh, you're gonna see this QR code here as well. And it's gonna go ahead and try to connect to the last Wi-Fi hotspot that it connected to. Typically, that's gonna be the hotspot of whoever you purchased your miner from. They're gonna do some initial testing and stuff to make sure that everything is working properly. But because you're gonna have a different Wi-Fi hotspot at your home or work, it's not gonna connect. And so for that reason, after it fails, it's gonna go ahead and go back into the initial setup process here like this. And you can see right here on screen, there's a Wi-Fi hotspot that you're gonna be able to connect to here from your phone, connecting directly to your miner. And when you take a look in your phone, you're gonna see the hotspot now for this particular miner. So we're gonna go ahead and connect to that. And then once we do, it's gonna go ahead and pull up this splash screen here with some basic information. And what we're gonna do is wanna get it connected to our home Wi-Fi. So we're gonna go over here to the top three bars and we're gonna tap on settings. And here under Wi-Fi settings, you're gonna see a host name. It's probably gonna be some generic name that you can customize if you've got a number of different miners. But the main thing here is gonna be under Wi-Fi SSID. You're gonna to wanna to go in and type in the SSID for your home Wi-Fi. Then you'll type in your password as well. Then once you do, you'll hit the check mark and then we'll scroll down all the way to the bottom for now and we're gonna hit save and then restart. Then once we do, you're gonna see the BitAx is gonna go ahead and reboot and it's gonna start connecting now to the new Wi-Fi hotspot that we just set up and as soon as it connects, we're gonna be up and running here and it's gonna go ahead and start hashing now that it's gonna be able to connect to the internet. Additionally, if you take a look at the top of the display, you can see the IP address right there. In my case, it's 192.168.1.64. Uh, that's the IP address that's been supplied by my home's Wi-Fi router, so we can connect to this IP address right here using the phone or computer to do all of the additional setup and programming. And for the sake of this example, we'll do it here on the computer. I'm gonna type in this IP address here into a web browser, uh, and then it's gonna give me this error right here saying that it doesn't support HTTPS. That's totally normal, totally fine. We're gonna hit continue to site here like this, and it's gonna go ahead and pull up the main dashboard here for our Nerd QX++. Now there's gonna be a number of different things that you're gonna see here. There's gonna be some stats and basic information here at the top. You're also gonna see the hash rate starting to build over time. It takes about 10 minutes or so for the Nerd QX line to build up from zero hash rate all the way up to full speed. Uh, and then down at the bottom, you're also gonna see things like the uh, different stats here for the power that it's drawing, uh, the different temperatures or the different parts, fan speeds, etc., as well as the performance. Basically, if you wanna get into overclocking, you can start to bump up the frequency and the voltage of the miner, and that's gonna also bump up your hash rate. And it'll also tell you the pool information that it's hashing away to as well, which we are actually gonna to wanna to customize. And to do that, let's go over here into settings. And this is where we were just looking here on our phone. Uh, we can customize the host name here. Again, if we've got multiple different miners, that way it makes it a little bit easier to tell what's what. The Wi-Fi information is what we had just set up here. So now uh, we're able to connect and hash away. Now, as far as the mining pool, we can go in here and choose basically where do we actually want it to hash. I like to use public pool here like this just because I'm basically solo mining. So uh, in this case, if one of my miners winds up solving the block, then I get the entire block reward. But you can also do something with shared pool mining as well and earn some sats every day if you prefer. Now this information you can pull here from whichever pool you choose. The user information, this you are gonna to wanna to customize as well. There's basically gonna be two parts here. We've got uh, the Bitcoin wallet where it's gonna be sending the Bitcoin rewards if you're solo mining or lottery mining. This is gonna be one of your specific wallets that you are gonna to wanna to go in and uh, set up here. By default, it's probably gonna be one of the miners that uh, whoever you bought this miner from, they're using one of their own just for testing, and you're just gonna to wanna to go in and change it here to make it one of your wallets. You can also do a dot right here, a period, and then give it a specific name here just to uniquely identify your specific miner if you've got a number of different Nerd QXs or BitAxes or something like that. 
Same thing with the password, usually doesn't matter, but uh, your mining pool will tell you that here as well. And then scrolling down, you'll also find the different mining settings. So if you wanna get into overclocking, which we can always cover in another video, you've got some options here to change both the frequency as well as the core voltage. Uh, the frequency you'll notice that uh, by default here, it's capped at 600, but if you wanna go higher, there is a button right there to go into the danger zone where you're gonna be able to go in and type in uh, different numbers here and start testing higher settings to get into overclocking. Uh, I'll cover overclocking in future videos, just like I've done with the bit axes, but be careful if you wanna start messing with this, uh, especially if you haven't upgraded both your power supply and the stock cooling. Additionally, if you scroll down, there's gonna be options here to control the main fan here on top of the ASICs. Uh, you can either have it in manual mode where you can choose basically how you want this fan to operate and you know basically how uh, hard it's gonna be blowing, or you can have it in like an auto mode here where you just choose like the target temperature here for the ASICs. Uh, and then also the shutdown temperature if it gets too hot. And then there's other settings here for uh, fan polarity and inverting it. And then some miscellaneous settings here towards the bottom. And then at the very bottom here, there's gonna be some options here to check for the latest firmware. It's gonna come with whatever firmware is loaded here onto the unit. The best thing to do is just to click this button right here to check for the latest firmware. And at the time of recording, the latest firmware is 1.0.31. And if that's newer than what you've got currently loaded in, you can just download both the firmware file as well as the new website file and then just browse and find the file and then flash it to the miner. And then the same thing here for the website UI here as well. You find that file and then flash that here to the miner too. And then once you do all that, you can go back here to the dashboard and kind of check out on everything. Uh, it's continuing to hash away. You can make sure that you've got the latest firmware loaded in here, of course, and then you're basically good to go and it's gonna start hashing. Now there are some other options here in the UI that you can check out. So for example, you can go over here to the swarm and you can actually have it search for all of the different miners on your network. The first time you may actually wanna do the auto scan here like this so it can actually search if it doesn't do it by default, or you can go in and type in the IP address manually of every bit ax or nerd q ax on your network. I also like to lower this option here just to have it refresh a little bit more often. And scrolling down, you can see a lot of the miners that I've got set up here at home, as well as uh, the stats here on the different miners. There's also an option here for the influx DB. This is basically an alternate UI here. If you don't wanna use uh, this dashboard here, you can use influx DB if you like as well. You can also set it up to basically send you some alerts in case something happens, like if the device reboots or if it fails to submit a share for an hour, you can basically set up a webhook notification here in Discord to send you a notification in Discord if something happens. And then lastly, you've got uh, kind of like some of the system stats here on the miner, just telling you what model you've got, your uptime, uh, you know, Wi-Fi signal strength, etc. But other than that, that's basically it for getting up and running and hashing away. And if you're enjoying these videos here, going over different types of Bitcoin miners, and you'd like to learn more, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell so you can stay up to date as new videos go live, as we start getting into maybe comparing a variety of different miners, getting into overclocking, etc. And with that said, thanks so much for watching. I hope you're all doing great and I'll see you in the next one.